Hey y'all, it's Kyle. I am here to show you a feature available on your um, iPhone and your um, uh, Kindle app and probably other e-reader apps uh, that has made a big impact on my um, uh, reading and scholarship and preaching and all kinds of things. And I hope it might be helpful for you as well. So what we're doing is we're tapping in to the accessibility features uh, that uh, that your iPhone has, and I'll post a link to somebody who's done a similar video like this uh, for Android. We're tapping into those accessibility features and uh, setting up a couple things and uh, then learning how to access them while we have the Kindle app um, open. And I think this probably works with other e-reader apps um, as well. So I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to go to uh, general and accessibility. And uh, speech is where the particular approach that I'm using um, is found. Uh, and the first thing you need to do is you need to turn on this speak screen. And what it says there, uh, just below it, is swipe down with two fingers from the top of the screen to hear the content of the screen. I'll show you how that works a little bit later. Uh, for me, it is still, even after a couple of weeks, the hardest part of this whole um, workflow but um, it is getting easier and it is what it is. Uh, you can set up what voices you wanna hear um, uh, in this menu here. If you click, if you click on voices um, and English and there's a bunch of choices. Um, somebody I found online recommended this Alex voice. That's what I've been using, it seems fine. Hello, my name is Alex. So um, that's that. So we've, we've chosen a voice and we've turned speech screen on, or speak screen on. Okay, so now let's go uh, into the Kindle app. And right now I'm reading um, Discourse Analysis um, Beyond the Speech Event, and I'm on page, oh, it doesn't say what page I'm on. I'm 18% of the way through the book, and if I wanna just continue reading where I left off, I have to do that two finger swipe move, okay? So I'm gonna take two fingers up above the, the screen itself and try to swipe down simultaneously. My hand's kind of at a weird angle doing this demo, so we'll see if I can do it in the first couple tries. I usually can, um, all things being equal. Lines 409, 411 from the January 18th conversation. All right, I'm gonna pause it for a second. Uh, so you can hear that it's starting to read from the top of the page. Uh, you can pause and play. Uh, you can use um, uh, this this little Kindle, um, you know, this 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 control panel here uh, will minimize and maximize, and you can use the arrows uh, to control that. Um, uh, you can use the rabbit or the turtle to slow down or speed up the reading. I don't know well you can how well you can hear the reading with how I've got my sound set up, but let me press play, and I'll speed it up and slow it down so you can hear the difference. Mrs. Bailey and others were able to use fewer index ICAL signs in order to pre So there it's quite fast. Uh, I'm going to press play and I'll start to slow it down. We suppose these characteriza characterizations on January 24, 4, because these signs now index not, not only a general stereotype of immoral and di disruptive adolescent behavior, but also the spe 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 specific conversation on January 18th in which a similar stereotype was also presupposed and attached to Taisha. So I am... Um use different speeds depending on the sort of density of what I am reading. Obviously, if you wanna get through a book uh, in, in something like the speed that you would get through it if you were um, reading it visually, even if you're quite a quote unquote slow reader um, reading visually, um, um, assuming that you can read visually, um, you've got to set it to go pretty fast. And um, I've been sort of training myself to listen better fast. I finally switched over when I listened to podcasts to listening to most of them at a faster speed. So um, you just sort of train yourself. Uh, this book doesn't have a ton of, of citations. That part gets, you know, kind of annoying. Um, but uh, again, the more you listen, uh, the more I've found at least that I'm able to, to read at a faster speed, to you know, give the proper amount of sort of mental weight to listening to the citations, uh, you know, to recognize when a pull quote is being read um, uh, to you for the second time, all that kind of thing. 
Um, so just a couple other notes on this. Uh, sometimes the first time that I press play, it will read down to the bottom of the first page and then stop. It doesn't always do that, but it sometimes does that. Um, and if so, then I um, sometimes have to reinitiate this and press play. And usually once I reinitiate it, then it just goes and keeps reading. So let me press play again here. In other words, the configuration of signs indexing this area. And now I'm going to skip to the next page. And each event ties as metaphorically less human than other students and their disruptive. And the, the parallelism between the characterizations across these two events of speaking, each of the narrated events in the figure represent. So you can see when you press the forward and backwards, you know, it skips to the new page. So sometimes if I'm getting ready to start reading, I'll press play, I'll skip it forward and I'll skip it backward. And that seems to trigger whatever it is in this interface that assumes that I wanted to read more than just the first page. Um, so uh, um, if we want to listen to this whole page, uh, you can hear how it'll just skip to the next one, hopefully. Represents voices and evaluations from the January 18th discussion on the left and the January 24th discussion on the right. Both narrating events end up separating Taisha from the rest of the class, positioning her as less human or morally questionable and as a disruptive outcast to be excluded from classroom conversation. Image. Figure 1.5 link parallelism across speech events by examining these two conversations together. We can all. So um, you can see there it automatically turned the page. It told me there was an image. It read the caption of the image, but obviously didn't tell me anything about the image. I don't know if there's markup capabilities uh, like there is in HTML where um, the people who put the book together can tell you what's in the image uh, via alt text like you would in HTML. I don't know if they. Uh, have that op, uh, possibility or not. I haven't encountered a figure yet that has actually told me what's in the figure. So it's not perfect, uh, but it's uh, it's been a pretty good uh, reading workflow for me, and I hope that it might, um, might be helpful for you. Let me leave you with two uh, small suggestions for doing this. Um, you do need to leave your screen on, and so you might want to swipe down and turn your brightness way, way down because it's easy to crank through battery pretty fast if you are leaving your screen open for a you know two hour listening session while hiking or whatever. Um, so uh, that's one recommendation. I'm gonna turn my screen back up so you can see it. The other recommendation I have uh, also in that little swipe down control area is to uh, make sure that you've got your screen locked because sometimes uh, if you don't have it locked, um, you know, and you turn it, it reconfigures the text on the page, and that seems to sometimes confuse the reader. Um, so I like to, I like to lock the screen. I like to turn the brightness down, and uh, do my little two finger move, um, two for two. And uh, that's that's all there is to it. So uh, I hope this proves as helpful for you as it has for me. I'm reading so much more than I used to, and uh, feeling really grateful for that. So I hope it might be helpful for a few as well few of you as well. Thanks, friends. I'll talk to you soon.